topic today is culture shock. Raise your hand if uh, you've moved to a country and stayed there for more than a year. Okay. Raise your hand if you think you went through phases of so-called culture shock. Okay. So, that is true. Culture shock is the shock of moving to a new foreign country every month. No. Well, yeah. Culture shock is the shock of moving to a new foreign country. Period there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that kind of went weird. The, yeah. So anyways. And every everybody kind of goes through culture shock in a different way. So for example, if you're a tourist going on your honeymoon to Bali for five days, you probably won't experience culture shock the same way an exchange student probably would. So culture shock has basically three distinctive phases, and everybody kind of goes through it in a little different way. As Ben just mentioned, I've been to many, many different countries, starting from Uruguay, Panama, New York, Honduras, Poland, Taiwan, and Malaysia. And a lot of people think since I've been moving so much, I probably don't experience culture shock anymore. Well, you are wrong. I experience the culture shock every single time. And that is why I'm going to talk about it today and use my own examples to illustrate the different phases of culture shock. So, there are three different phases. The first one is the honeymoon phase. Yeah! <laughs> the second one is the negotiation stage. No! <laughs> the is the adjustment stage. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's go on and look at the first stage, the honeymoon stage. As you can see, it's kind of like taking a honeymoon. When you first step to that country, you feel everything is so great. You look at everything from a romantic light. Everything seems new, wonderful. You're fascinated by almost everything, and you feel very, very excited. The food might taste a little bit different. Maybe even the water that you drink tastes very, very good in that country <laughs> compared to your own country, although it's pretty much the same. But everything just seems so great. I actually passed through that same phase when I moved from New York back to Taiwan in fifth grade. In school, the first day of school I went there, everybody knew that I did not speak very well Chinese. So, everybody was thinking that I'm a foreigner, and especially when you're a foreigner, they treat you in a very special way. So they're all like, wow, you're from the States. <gasps> Tell me all about it. All the kids wanted to talk to me. They gave me candy. They gave me cookies. They gave me a lot of special attention. Never in my life have I felt so special. Even the teachers treated me different. I mean, how many kids get tutor lessons from the principal teaching you both <laughs> when you're a fifth grader? Yeah, not many people. I got that sort of attention. So I felt that everything was just awesome. I loved the place. But of course, I was only passing through the first phase of culture shock, the honeymoon phase. And this is the second stage, the negotiation <laughs> stage. This is when differences appear very, very evident. And you start feeling a little bit of anxiety. Everything starts to become a little bit annoying, like traffic, ugh, scooters, ugh. And everything is just sort of disgusting sometimes. So I got a lot of uh, problems when eating things. I didn't feel very well. I don't know why, okay? And sometimes I got really ir irritated very often. So all this became from, everything became disappointments. So I actually switched from the honeymoon stage to the negotiation stage pretty quick. That is when I realized that teachers hit you if you get bad scores. Yeah, I totally switched to this stage right after that. So I started to hate school because I did not read Chinese and I couldn't understand what was going in class. And math was so advanced. Yeah, back in the States, everything was just plus and minus. And there, you started to do a lot of different things, which I didn't understand. I also didn't understand the food. They ate fish with fish eye eyeballs as well as fins. And uh, intestines were delicacies. Yeah. And of course, stinky tofu, for some weird reason, was not stinky to the Taiwanese people. I did not understand that concept. So, I was very shocked. I wanted to go back to the United States. I cried and I told my parents, when can I go back? I want to go back and celebrate 
Halloween, Christmas, Easter, all of these things are not um, culture things that people do in Taiwan. But then, as I cried, my parents made it very clear that I would not be able to go back anytime soon. So, I had to switch to the next stage, which is called the adjustment stage. This is when you start to develop routines. You start to know what to expect in the culture. The country feels no longer new, and things start to slowly become normal. <laughs> and as you're doing this, you start to develop some problem-solving skills. When you have this problem, what should you do? And slowly, you start to begin to accept the culture in a more positive attitude. Because you know that you cannot go anywhere else, pretty much. <laughs> so, in my case, at school, I started to understand Chinese a little bit better. I started to try to keep up with math. And I actually started to realize that fish eyeballs were pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sticky tofu? Uh, that's still kind of sticky. I don't understand that anyway. So, these are the three stages of culture shock that everybody sort of goes through. Okay? Let me review. What are the three stages? What's the first one? Honeymoon stage. stage. What's the second one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stage. And the third one. Adjustment yeah. stage. Good. But that's not the main point. Well, that is the main point. But that's not the only main point that I want to do, that I want to give you in this speech. One very important thing that I want you guys to understand is that we not only experience these three stages when it comes to culture shock. Actually, we experience these three stages whenever we meet a new challenge or we're in a new environment. For example, having a new job, you might go through the same thing. Going to a new school, you might go through the same thing. Being in a new relationship, you might go through the same thing. So what is it that we want to focus on? We want to focus on trying to step out of our comfort zone and passing from negotiation to adjustment state as soon as possible. You can't stay in denial forever. You can't be pessimistic forever. So. Next time, when you feel you're stuck in the negotiation stage, just step out and try your best to move to the adjustment stage, okay? So, try to make things better, and if you do,